Thank you and welcome to the French Australian New Zealand Business Days, uh, an event which, of course, this year is digital. I hope you all do well wherever you are. Uh, we are today facing many crises. COVID, of course, economic recession in many areas, uh, but we should not lose sight of climate change, even in these specific times. Climate change is a major issue of our generation, and we need together to work and change the trajectory of climate. Let's be simple. Climate change is all about carbon emission, and carbon emissions is all about energy. The cities particularly, and we are talking today about cities, are on the front line of climate change. Cities consume around 70% of the world's energy, and no surprise, they account for around 70% of global CO2 emission. More than half of the world's population live in cities, but when we go into rich countries, 80% in Australia and New Zealand of the population lives in cities and that's expected still to increase. The way we live in our cities and communities has to change. When we dig deeper into cities, the first brick of the cities is of course buildings. Buildings represent 40% of carbon emissions in the world. We spend a lot of time in buildings on our homes and when it is COVID time, we spend even more time in our homes, which makes us more aware of their importance. Those places, our homes, are critical for our lives, for our comfort, for our productivity, for our health, for a more engaging environment. But think about it. When we build, it's for more than 50 years. So number one, we have to build future-proof. And second, we have to retrofit much faster. We build today less than 1% new building every year. If we want to change the trajectory of climate change, we must focus on retrofitting faster everywhere, from home to buildings, to solve the issue. There is one good news in all of this. Technologies to face those huge challenges exist, and they rely on two disruptions. The first disruption is, of course, digital, the Internet of Things, which connects us to our environment, changing the way we interact with it. It is a foundation of a much smarter and much more desirable future. By applying digital, we can be more than 30% efficient in buildings and industries than we are today. That's using digital solutions to use energy only when and where it's needed. The second large disruption is electrification of the world. And one would say electricity is an old technology, but it's not the same electricity. We will see a big migration in transportation on electric vehicles, in buildings for heating and cooling, something that will become an environment that will become much more human-centric and will drive us to net-zero buildings. The world will invest more in electricity in the coming 20 years than it has invested since the creation of electricity. But that electricity will be profoundly different. It's going to be about renewables, microgrids, storage, solar, wind, and electric mobility. Those two revolutions, digital and electric, smart and green, enable us to cut emissions by half. They allow for a step up in efficiency, and efficiency is a foundation of sustainability. We worked, for example, with our software company Aviva to develop a solution for Melbourne East Link Freeway tuners that bring together automation, connectivity and software for real-time control and visibility on their own on-demand ventilation system. This has reduced their energy consumption by almost 70% on their carbon footprint by 9,000 tons per year. It is time for action. And that's why we've joined the Energy Transition Initiative in Australia, along with other large companies, some who are present during this event. I would like also to outline that we learn a lot of what is deployed today in Australia and New Zealand. Think about it. More than 20% of Australian households have rooftop solar. South Australia has already had one day powered solely by renewables. 
New Zealand South Island is almost 100 percent generated electricity is almost 100 percent generated by hydropower. That is really impressive. But what if our buildings in our cities had microgrids becoming energy prosumers? South Australia produce market, the state's major market has done this, installing a microgrid in a city context, giving the market full autonomy, total reliability on cutting its power bills. But we can go even further. We can connect those smart and net zero buildings together. We can connect them with EV on smart transportation, such as bus fleets. We can deploy sensors and analytics more broadly on waste water on water plants to improve their quality and efficiency as we already do with Sydney Water on Water Corp in Perth. We can encourage energy sharing for a more inclusive city. That is what we call systemic efficiency. So let's build a complete view of a smart city. The city of the future will be digital, it's going to be green and it's going to be inclusive. Those three go together. Let's make sure that we use the meetings we're going to have together to design this city of the future. I'm really glad to be with you today and thank you for participating into those business days.